Okay, so welcome to the second video in our third lesson, our third lesson of six on behavioral economics. Uh, we introduced the concept of nudge and choice architecture in the first video. Uh, I just want to take you through for a few minutes the EAST framework for nudges. EAST is a nice acronym, a nice way of thinking about uh, the kind of nudges that might work in changing people's behavior. I say the word might, because of course there's a whole debate in, in economics for sure, in behavioral psychology, about the extent to which nudging can have a notice, noticeable and long-lasting impact on people's behavior. But the EAST framework is something that might be worth thinking about, particularly if you're new to the subject. And EAST stands for, well, make it easy, make it attractive, make it social, and make it timely. The EAST framework. Easy often involves changing defaults, uh, changing the default setting and over helping to overcome status quo bias. Easy can be making change relatively quick and costless. Sometimes uh, simple things like the design of a form. If you, if you make it better designed, people's choices change. Attractive can be making the use of financial rewards. It doesn't have to be. Uh, we said that nudges typically don't use financial rewards, but sometimes small rewards can make a difference. Uh, and I'll provide some other videos, by the way, some little really good quirky videos in addition to this one in the web page of this lesson to give you an example of that. I think social is important. So within the East framework, social, using the power of networks, people don't make decisions in isolation, they, they, they live in communities and with, they, they live in societies, and encouraging perhaps a change in social norms. We'll come on to some examples in a second or two. And also, uh, people's behaviour can change if you make a, a timely nudge, when people are most receptive, and when people are focusing on the immediate costs and benefits, perhaps to themselves, their family or their community. Well, make it easy. One of the ways to do it is to change the default. Uh, in the UK, certainly in England, they have simply moved, well, recently moved from opt-in to opt-out of human organ donation for adults. So they've moved to a system of um, presumed consent for organ donations for adults over the age of 18. Quite an interesting example. And that should, in theory, and in practice, increase the organ donation rates going forward and hopefully uh, bring down um, the waiting lists for people needing transplants. Another simple change the default nudges to alter the default settings on a device. It could be, for example, you change the default setting on a thermometer for a, a housing heating system, just bring it down by one degree, or change the default settings on your watch or your air conditioning units to change behaviour. We found a really good example of this at school. We're using huge amounts of paper in the duplicating department and in offices and departments. And we found that many of our printers were not set to print both sides. So if you set your printer to print both sides of the paper, uh, just a nice, simple change of the default, you can change behaviour. Making change attractive is good. There's some lovely fun theory examples. I'm going to put a couple of videos to help you on this one in the web page. Uh, but making change attractive, the, the design of, for example, staircases and things and buildings can change behaviour. This is Bourke Street Station in Melbourne, a city I know well, and a fantastic mur mural, mural <laughs> where uh, people can sit if they want, or they're certainly much more encouraged to use the stairs. Uh, if you do that. Uh, and quite a few cities are now thinking about urban design, about design of pavements and uh, cycle routes and things. Make it attractive, make it easy to use the cycle, make it easy to use the stairs. Uh, what we're seeing, of course, in the wake of the pandemic is uh, businesses, organisations now having to use choice architecture to make it easy for people to socially distance. Here's a Starbucks in Singapore. Uh, here is a coffee shop in Milan with a nice bit of choice architecture for where to stand. And uh, in France, they do it quite nicely here. Uh, behavioural design for distancing at Nice Station in France. These are good examples of uh, easy, fairly attractive, uh, low-cost behavioural nudges. I think they're good to, good to highlight. Make it attractive, the design of publicity material. The UK government will have tested lots and lots of uh, publicity material for trying to encourage uh, cleanliness and hygiene habits during the coronavirus pandemic. You know, nice simple messaging, wash your hands with soap and water, 
more often and for 20 seconds. Um, dry hands thoroughly, protect yourself and others, etc. Uh, it's good simple messaging that seems to have had an effect. I said a, a minute or two ago that I think the social aspect of nudging is particularly important. Uh, I've encouraged, by the way, my year 11 students who are taking this course to go out and find some nudges in the open open air, some nudges in the wild, if you like. Try and find some real world examples of behavioural nudges taking place. This is a particularly powerful one, I think, from Sweden, where if you give blood and that blood is then uh, used uh, to help a patient, the donor gets a text message. And here is the donor receiving the text message. A powerful incentive, I think, non-financial to sign up to blood donation. Uh, making um, Appealing to new social norms of behaviour is quite important. The messaging makes a difference. Stay home, save lives. Stay home, stay home, etc. Very simple messaging to create a new social norm. Uh, here's a nice little example in Mumbai in India. Uh, lots of drivers honking their horns when they've linked the red lights to a decibel meter and the timer resets when the harsh horns get too loud. You know, if you have to wait longer if you honk your horn, uh, perhaps encouraging uh, social, social change amongst the impatient drivers of Mumbai. And timely, so, you know, things like the choice architecture of, of a street, the, the signage makes a difference. When you're entering, for example, an airport, the signage makes a huge difference in terms of your experience in an airport. Here's an example of a local authority trying to get drivers to speed down uh, as they approach a, a, a crossing. What I'll do uh, is put the, uh, two or three of my favourite videos into the main web page uh, on the Choose to Do website, which I think illustrates some of the social, attractive and timely aspects of nudging. But I hope you found some good examples there of the, of the idea of how to nudge people's behaviour.